Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is David and this channel is gonna be all about bodybuilding and bringing you the best knowledge when it comes to building muscle. I'm not gonna lie, I am from Poland so it's extremely hard to reach out to the people outside of my country. So if you are from the United States or England or any country outside the Poland, please subscribe to my channel please share this to your friends and basically help me share this information with everyone who is interested in it. If you are from Europe and you like to support my channel and myself, please use the code Olszewski at www.propeptide.pl and order the best quality peptides. They are shipping it throughout Europe, so don't worry about it. And without further ado, let's get started. Everyone and welcome once again to the podcast. Today we have a special guest. Either, uh, either though I say it every time I have a guest, but you are a special guest just because I trying to get you on for a long time. <laughs> and the, the 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 PM forum was the 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 main place where I can really. Like you can really see my message, I think, just because the the Instagram is just. Oh uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, nonetheless, Stuart Sutherland, better known as Beef Stew. Hello. Thank you for having me, man. <laughs> Isn't that crazy that in today's society people are better known from their like Instagram titles? Yeah. Other than <laughs> yeah. People, people call me Beef, like it's my first name, like in person, in real life, and it, it drives me crazy. It's like, it's not, it's not my name, bro. <laughs> but I'm I'm starting to get used to it. It's kind of kind of weird, though. Where where do you get this beef stew from? Uh, so back in when I was in high school, I played lacrosse with uh, and and somebody somebody on my team back then. This would have been like. 10 11 years ago they gave me that nickname because it like even back then before i was bodybuilding or anything um uh, i still was pretty pretty jacked like for for just playing sports and stuff uh like i had delts and you know i look bigger than i should um but yeah it just gave it to me then and i just remembered it when i made my instagram handle years later and it just stuck and i i don't know i'm, I'm not shaking it now so it's uh it's here to stay yeah, it's crazy to me, but but you're actually uh, starting your your sports career. Let's say it's like that in like a cheerleader team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so I played I played lacrosse back in high school and middle school and stuff. But when I got to when I got to college, I I was just kind of like working out. Uh, I didn't have anything to do. Like this was before I got into like serious bodybuilding training, you know. Um, and one of my one of my actually. So I was going to like, I was in a fraternity in college and we were going to like seeing all these sororities and stuff. And a lot of the sorority girls tried out for the cheer team, but they didn't make it. So they were telling me, oh, you're, you're pretty big. Like you should go try out for this shit. And I, I was like, I got nothing better to do. So I went and did it and I was on for like a year. It was really fun, man. Yeah, that was, that was so fun. Uh, we kind of called ourselves uh, half-lates, not athletes. Because uh, like, <laughs> I don't know. We weren't super serious. We were just having fun and stuff, but got to see the football games like on the field and everything. And it was, it was pretty cool. I, I just, I just wanted to ask you just because in, in Poland, something like, like a cheerleaders teams and stuff like that isn't really a thing. So yeah. Is, is that a real, really a sport that you can like a, make a living out of it? No, no, you can't make a living off of it, but, um, like in in America, a couple of the people on my team. So like I wasn't very good. Uh, this was just for like for my college, right? But there's like competitive like all star cheerleading teams that will go to like national level competitions. I don't know if they have like a professional league or anything, but those guys are like those guys and girls are really really good. Um, it's crazy though because like all my friends who were really good at it and did it for a long time, like five seven years. Um, like their shoulders and knees and hips, they were all fucked up because, you know, you're throwing, 
you know, a 120 pound girl doesn't seem that heavy, right? Until they're like, you know, up over your head and they're squirming around. And then mm-hmm. it's just tearing apart your shoulders and everything. And everybody got injured. Uh, so I kind of got out before that, but it was, uh, it was, it was still fun, man. <laughs> Yeah, you have to remember that most of the times they are probably also drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, maybe. <laughs> so that's add up to the to the difficult difficulty of this sport. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I got it. Up. I, I'm I'm on your log on, on the PM forum, but and mm-hmm. I know the answer like to this. But for those who are living under the lock, the rock. <laughs> what's what's phase are you right uh, right now and what are your goals for the, the like uh, the next competitive season just because this one was was pretty good for you and basically from from a person who who was like a no one knows you no one knows yeah. you basically and right now it seems like a, everyone knows you <laughs> there's, I did a few months ago yeah 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 there's not a single person bodybuilding that doesn't know at least beef stew maybe not the stew as Stuart Sutherland but but beef stew everyone knows that guy so so first first of all what's happened that, that you are right now a big star <laughs> and what's what's like uh, your plans for the for the next next season well I mean I just had a really good breakout season uh I didn't win anything that would have been nice but but uh, Oh yeah, almost. Uh, so yeah, like the kind of started when um, I did a guest posing at like three weeks out from uh, the New York Pro, uh, and me and Hunter Labrador were both on stage together. And he was like, I think he was like thirteen or fourteen weeks out at that point. Um, but like we, there was a picture that my girlfriend took at that show of the two of us hitting a front double bicep, and I looked pretty good next to him. You know, I, it wasn't it wasn't like the complete horrible mismatch i was expecting you know uh so that picture got fucking shot around everywhere and that got a lot of buzz going into the show uh and then i play second in new york um and you know i thought so like those 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 two shows i did i did new york and cali i did i got second in new york and i got fourth in cali um and you know i thought that those two shows were going to be like really shallow i thought those were going to be some of the weaker shows of the whole year right but it actually ended up being those were some of the more competitive ones of the whole season i mean you didn't necessarily have like big names there like hassan or like ian or like you know these other guys that would go ahead and win shows later in the year but like if you compare it to like some of the lineups that they ran into you know in the next couple of months it was it was pretty competitive uh as far as like the depth there you know, the, the number of quality bodybuilders you had on stage. I mean, the top five, top six in New York was all, they were all pretty good. You know, they were in shape. They were pretty big. Um, so it didn't end up kind of being like the, the pushover show I thought it would be. Um, but he did pretty good there. Uh, I don't know, dude. It, it find it, it's funny that you, you say like, uh, everyone's talking about me now. I think they were a couple months ago. But, you know, bodybuilding, man, it's like nobody, nobody remembers you past like a week or two because like they're on to the next pro show. Right. We're all so like, you know, short attention span, short memory. I, I, I've mostly forgot about the shows, too. But um, I mean, so, yeah, since since then, since those shows, I've basically been I did a, an eight week rebound. Uh, and then I did a six week kind of cruise clean out period. I got my blood work done. It's actually looking better than it has uh, in past years post show at this point, which is which is good. Um, so as of like a week ago, I just started my off season for real. Um, and I'm starting it out with uh, like kind of a mini cut. So I just I just want to keep for this next off season here, I think I might do New York next year. I'm not sure, but for this next off season, I want to keep things like really lean, really tight. Um, cause like, I, I don't see any reason for me to go above like 285. Uh, last year I was like 295 out of bed in the morning and you know, I was, I was really big. Right. But like there was probably 10 pounds of shit on me, you know, food, you know, water, just fat, just, you know, crap didn't need to be there. So 
this year I'm going to, I'm starting out with like a little mini cut a couple of weeks and then I'm just going to kind of keep things moving upwards, but a little more gradually. Um, and then, you know, just kind of keep things under 285 and hopefully start prep right around there uh, next January or February. Um, it'll make prep easier. You know, if I start leaner, I'll be able to get to a, a leaner point at the end of the, at the end of the prep, put another couple pounds on me and then, uh, you know, see where I land. I Next year, as far as like, I mean, this year I got beat on conditioning, which I hate to say, but like, it's true. I mean, I got beat um, in, in New York primarily by Tonio because, I mean, I don't know if he was leaner than me necessarily, but he was definitely harder, if that makes sense. You know, like he's, he's a couple years older than me. He's been training a little longer. He's got some maturity on him that I don't have because I'm only 26, right? Yeah. There's some of those things just kind of come with time. Um, so hopefully with another year under my belt, if I can push, you know, another couple pounds off of me during the diet um, that I didn't this year, I, I hope I can get to that level of condition where I can like, you know, kind of close the door. Cause I was really close this year. Um, surprisingly, I actually, I mean, when I was on stage, I was one of the bigger guys there. I didn't expect to be like one of the bigger dudes. I mean, you know, even like, you know, Sergio was on stage in, in, in California. Right. And I mean, he didn't like, I thought he was just going to dwarf everybody cause he's tall. He's like 280 or whatever. He's huge. Right. Um, and he didn't like completely dwarf us, you know, um, which, which was a pleasant surprise, but I just need to get harder that simple. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm focused on for the next year and, and this off season. Yeah. It, isn't that crazy that no matter how much you weight, no matter how big you are, you always tend to think about yourself that you are the smallest guy out there and <laughs> basically yeah. that you are <laughs> that you are not on on that level but but you says you you surprisingly you 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 are not looking so so bad next to the hunter but you are basically almost on the same level maybe maybe not like a olympia placing or something like that but but size wise and and when it comes to the to the to the even even the condition as the hunter for the first time this season is is conditioned to be honest and yeah he then, was he was next yeah. level this year he 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 brought it because he was pissed from last year everyone yeah. i talked to was like yeah he he was pissed off and he pushed himself so i'm really do, I'm do, you, do, do you think this is because he's changing his diet I think that had something to do with it, yeah. But he also was just doing way more cardio. You know, so like he more, was yeah. over it was like an hour to an hour and a half at the end of prep. You know, I don't he wasn't doing anywhere near that much at the end of prep last time when he did the Olympia. Um and you know, he's probably doing more cardio and eating more food. And he's you know, he again, he's like a year older than last year. That new tissue that's on him has been on him for another year. So it's not just gonna fall off quite as easy. Um, that's something that I personally kind of had an issue with, right? Because I've been growing a lot in the last few years. You know, I put on like 25 pounds of stage weight in a year and a half. Uh, that was, that was like a crazy off season, right? But during that prep for the, for when I turned pro in 22, um, you know, we were really careful with like refeeding me probably more than we otherwise would have. because like I got all this new muscle on me. Right. But it, it can kind of get away from you if you, if you really push too hard. Um, and I was still a little tentative dieting this year. I think um, me and my coach are always communicating about that stuff. But uh, I mean, next year I'll have had that tissue on me for like, you know, two three years at that point. Right. So I think I should be able to, you know, just, just push myself flatter and, you know, harder for longer and, dig a little deeper without just kind of withering away, which would have happened, you know, in previous years, I think. Um, but yeah, you know, I think Hunter was just kind of pushing harder uh, and, you know, he filled himself out at the end and he looked amazing. Yeah, he was, he was, man, you, you says that, you, that you trying to get a few pounds more, but stay lean throughout the whole off season. And, This is like like in on your level, you're basically building up 
some tissue just to lose tissue, just to have the yeah. room to 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 to, to for that. Yeah, give yourself a little cushion yeah. so that at the end you can, you know, if if you if your legs are like the thing to go when you're doing cardio at the end, right? You need your legs to be like twice as big in the off season so that you have a little little tissue to give up to get to that like the last you know two three percent of conditioning that's going to set you apart. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's part of what I'm doing here. Um, I'm also, I've also got some weak body parts that I want to bring up mostly my back. Um, overall, I think I'm reasonably balanced, but there's just a couple of things, mostly width on my back that I want to fix. So, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of got my, my, uh, my game plan laid out for me. Yeah. And your coach is actually a blue tailor. Yeah, so he's he's uh he's um, known for for being a smart guy. So, so you you don't have to worry. Basically, you just do what he he says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm coming up on working with him for like three years now, um, and you know, I mean, but he's he's a really good friend of mine at this point as well. Like, fuck, we'll get on the phone, just talk about bullshit, you know, just like life stuff all the time. Um, because you know he's he doesn't have a ton of people to talk to necessarily, but um, yeah, I mean we're when we're when we're prepping together, we're like we're almost to the point where like we're reading each other's minds. Like when I'm really like flat and really depleted and stuff, we're kind of thinking the same thing. When he sees my pictures, we're like okay, got to go eat now, do a refeed or whatever. Um, but yeah, we're, we're communicate really good. You know, he doesn't push me to do anything I'm uncomfortable with. You know with you know drug wise or anything honestly <laughs> we've like compared to the first prep i did with him i took less last year and less this year compared to like that first year i did with him it's like in terms of like total drugs i was on uh we figured out what works better for me um and it's it's pretty prepping now is pretty automatic for the two of us you know working together but uh this next year i just want to be able to push a little deeper and that's not rocket science. It's just like eat less and do more cardio. That's <laughs> it's not complicated, but it's not easy, you know. Yeah, basically, basically, is just doing what you what you said. <laughs> yeah, man. So can we briefly that just like discuss your beginning beginnings days? Just because as right now everyone wants to copy, like I said before we start the recording. Yeah. They like to copy whatever the the pros do, thinking that they are get to the size they are by doing what they do right now. And this is just a bullshit. We everyone knows that probably starting off your diet looks probably like not even a half decent. No, compared to right <laughs> now, you're probably your training probably was something like. I don't know. You you probably find uh, something on a magazine or on fo on just forum and do whatever it. I don't know. Came to your mind the, the, the day. Yeah. But can can you discuss how your how's your diet looks like, uh, like uh, when you were I don't know. Let's say in your first half year year of the training and uh, your training how 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 is how's your training structure. Back I mean, then. way back then, if I mean, if you go back to like when I started lifting weights in high school, um, I mean, I was basically just doing squatting, benching, and deadlifting. Um, have you ever heard of uh, starting strength? It's like a, it's yeah, like a the program. Yeah, like a powerlifting yeah. training program. So my dad bought that book, um, and we just like kind of taught ourselves, you know, how to squat, bench, and deadlift. Uh, using those like five by five rep schemes for, you know, a couple of years when I first started um, in, in high school. And I kept on doing that into college a little bit. You know, I, I'll be honest, when I got to college, I was mostly partying and drinking a lot the first little bit. But once I cut that out, I mean, I got more focused in with like, you know, I was still doing those like those big three movements. But then I do like I think I spent a little while doing an Arnold split. And then I switched over to eventually to a push pull leg split. Um, and, you know, I've, I've honestly, like in, in the last five years, I've mostly done a push pull leg split for the most part um, with 
I mean, whatever I'm doing, it always has frequency in it. I'm hitting everything at least twice a week with my programs. And that's what I like to set up with my clients as well. Um, especially if like they've got like a weak body part. Um, you know, if they got a strong one, we're going to put that to like once a week frequency. And then they got a weak one, we're going to put that up to like twice a week at, at the very least. Um, and I think that's, you know, as far as like how I've changed my training over the years, it's all been based off of um, how much workload can I put into a session or two sessions per week uh, and recover from it and get stronger each time. Right. So if you're doing a, if you're doing a pole session, for example, um, you know, you can't necessarily do like 15, 16 sets of back work twice a week. You might be able to do 16 sets over two sessions for like the whole week. Right. Um, but kind of manipulating that variable, like how much like volume you're doing, um, is mostly how I've, I've how I've changed things over the years. Um, and as I've noticed, as I've gotten older, <laughs> unusually, um, the amount of volume that I need for my legs to, to grow them or maintain them, it has gotten lower. Um, and then yes. the volume that I need for my my back and like my upper body um, has kind of increased a little bit. Uh, and also that like the amount that I can recover from has increased a bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all just like I, for a long time, I'm not currently using a log book, but I did use one for a long time. Cause like, it's really good feedback when you, know, when you've got everything dialed in, you know, your sleep, your food, your drugs, everything's like consistent as it should be. If you're not strong, getting stronger week to week, you know, adding a rep on, adding five pounds on, whatever, um, in your off season, and then something something's fucked up there. So it, you know, maybe you need to change the amount of work that you're doing in the gym. Maybe you need to get better sleep. You know, you need to like go down the list and figure out what's wrong. Um, and if you're not progressing, you got to fix it because that's that's really, um, you know, in my opinion, uh, for I'd say like 80 percent of people in the gym. Uh, except for like really advanced people or really gifted people, you know, that progression over time is going to be the most important thing that you should be chasing. Um, everybody who's really big is also really strong. There's a big correlation there, you know, and now, you know, maybe people at the highest level, um, you know, they have to, you know, throw in a whole bunch of intensifiers and, uh, you know, drop sets and additional volume just to get enough stimulus because of the level that they're at. Um, to you know to grow uh, and i'm kind of getting to that point now like i'm i'm noticing i need to in order to get stronger on some of my back stuff um and and continue to improve that i've been creeping up my volume that i'm doing on my my pull sessions um and i think that's been helping me a bit uh, i noticed i'm able to recover from it i feel pretty good um but you know like i said my leg stuff is I haven't really changed my leg training in close to three years at this point. Um, I just haven't really seen any need to. It's, it's still working. It's like, don't fix it if it ain't broken. Um, so, yeah, it was a bit rambly, but the, I, I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where I shape my training based off of principles, you know, whether it's progressive overload, you know, how much can I recover from? Um, you know, what's weak, what's strong, and like then trying to just hit things frequently um, kind of underpins a lot of it. Um, and I've, like I said, I've always kind of had a two a week frequency on most of my most of my stuff. Yeah, so you 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 pre, you, you 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 are pretty basic when it comes to the to your beginnings like uh, days, and this is what's probably yeah. built the most of mass you have right now. I, yeah. I would say, yeah, like a, three big lifts are the main thing that that probably beginners should focus on. It it, it doesn't have to be conventional deadlift. It could be like a, a RDLs or a stiff like that, so something like that. Mm -hmm. And with squats, it's the same. You don't have to barbell squat if you are, I don't know, like a two meters tall or something like that. That's obvious, but you can do like a hack squat or smooth squat or, or any any kind of move that's that's involved uh, like a full like a flex on your on your hips and, and knees like so so that's yeah. that's 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 basics basics but i mean and i'm still doing them i'm still doing all those movements uh 
it's I think the the thing that people miss and this is something that I really got to drill in when I'm working with my clients is like the intensity side. I mean, it's hard. Like I'll, I'll have my guys like send me videos of them training sometimes. And some of them get it, you know, some of them know how to like, you know, they hop on a hack squat machine and they go until they get crushed. I'm like, good work. Yeah. You nailed that. Good. That, that was perfect. I don't need to do much with you. Uh, and then some people are just like, you know, they're doing a set of 12. They had like three left in the tank. And you can see it, you know, they rack the weight and they're like the bar speed or like whatever. It didn't even slow down. Yeah. Um, there wasn't struggle there. Um, and, you know, if you look at it for long enough, you know what you're looking at. It's like, yeah, try try again, pal. You know, and I, I that's going to be the hardest thing to teach without like have it being hands on with people. Because um, like you can hit failure, you know, if you're doing. And yeah, I should also clarify, like all that volume talk I was talking about, like those sets that I'm talking about are working sets all the way to failure. I don't do anything, you know, reps in reserve. I don't do any RPE, whatever. Uh, it's just like take a set all the way there. Um, what was I saying? Um, but yeah, you, like without being hands on and like being there with a the person, you've probably t- done sets where you're like, you know, you can feel your muscle failing. Right. So you like don't push quite as hard. You just let it fail. But if you like dig deep and you, you know, you might be able to get that rep out. It's like, how hard are you pushing mentally to get those last one or two? Um, that's again, that's something you can't really teach. And I think that's that's something I've always been pretty good at. Um, just because I, you know, I enjoy training like that. Uh, but it's hard to it's hard to get into people's heads without just like showing them in real life yeah it is i i, I tend to be a lower uh like a volume guy and high intense guy but i i figured out that most people just can't train like that it's, they, yeah. they just can't they they are sending you a video and you see that this is like a like a mental failure not not a, a yeah. muscular failure just because you see that some guys the 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 worst case i have was a guy who is working on my gym and i was there when he he he's doing his set and he stops and i just watched and and i and i cannot believe so so i just walk towards him and just said to him that we're going to repeat this set but i'm going to add another two plates to your leg press and guess how many sets more with those two more plates he 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 was he he do, he done sixteen what? more reps. Sixteen. Sixteen more reps with additional two plates. Because you were there telling yeah. him to. <laughs> yeah. And he 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 he, he told me that was a failure set. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing there's is, like, many of, of those guys. If you take a set to failure, right? Say you're doing like you're on a hack squat, you do a set of 12 and you couldn't get another rep. If you loaded up that same weight, you're going to get like seven or eight next time. Yeah. You know, you can rest as long as you want. You spend like five or six minutes sitting there, catching your breath, getting water, whatever. Like if you get back on there and it was actually 100% effort, like you're not, you're going to get like eight or nine. It's, yeah. Because there's so much fatigue from training like that, that, you know, you can't do a lot of volume and you got to be really careful with how you do those sets. But um, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's like, you know, how bad do you want it? And you can't make them want it. You, you, you basically answered the question, but I wanted to, to ask you, what do you think about those whole like a scientific approach? Like how leaving the the reps in reserve and stuff like that, just because you see we are we are talking about a volume and theoretically like a, they say that ten uh, sets is like a minimum effective volume for a body part per week. But imagine mm-hmm. if if some people just make those ten sets like my client. <laughs> so yeah, this just this is just this is not enough. And for yeah. example, imagine that someone's just doing like a five set, like, but he's doing it like you. That's probably 
more than enough. Oh yeah, five sets on one movement. Yeah. I I, I mean, oh. if I did like five sets of barbell squats, I would leave the gym afterwards. I mean, I might do. I think I do like five total sets for quads in my whole workout. Um, I don't have like the biggest legs in the world, but they're pretty good. I mean, I also, I'm, I might just be gifted in that regard. I don't know. The thing is like, you know, you mentioned that minimum effective volume number and that's an interesting metric, right? You know, based on studies that I don't know how the hell they standardized it, but like, <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the problem with studies. It's like, you, how, how hard are these people pushing, you know? what what is a, a set to them but anyways say it's 10 sets per week um you know i, I mean everyone's different it's like it, it, it can be used those those numbers can be used as a starting off point, right uh and thinking about the amount of volume you're doing in terms of like total working sets per week is a good way to think about it you know you can go through your your log book and tally up everything that you're doing it's a good metric right but like Go, you know, listening to doctor whoever uh, about, you know, who, you know, what the number is you should be doing, what's optimal is it's, 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 it's bullshit. And it's not, well, it's not bullshit. It's just, it's going to get you started, but you need to like figure it out and learn your body enough to know like, okay, this is too much. This is too little. This is my sweet spot. Um, and then go from it, you know, and adapt over time. Um, and, but, you know, people just kind of, they, they want an answer. They want a straightforward answer, like do 12 sets per week over two sessions. And that's optimal. Um, like that might, might be optimal for person A, but person B might need twice as much or like person A doesn't train very hard. Person B needs like five sets, you know? Uh, so I think it's better to think about, like setting up your training in terms of principles rather than like strict numbers. Uh, and then you can be more intelligent with what you're doing. Um, Cause you know, if you just want to know what's perfect, you're not going to find it. Nobody can tell you that. Unfortunately, I wish it were so easy. I'm smiling just because the, the science uh, the subject is tricky just because I yeah. know exactly what you have in your, in your head right now, because on one hand the science is this is a fact you cannot like argue with a science some some uh, like uh subjects are just was exam and they find something and it's theoretically a like a, a fact or at least a assumption that's that's probably accurate in in some way but on the other hand it's most of the time totally bullshit <laughs> so it's like I, well the way I, the way i love the science but i hate the science it's like i think i think it i think the way that it's sold and marketed is bullshit because like like the way that like the science guys sell their programs and sell their their stuff right is by a, they 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 use really big words they they speak in very long extended sentences this is like this is a marketing tactic they use um, I think they, if they're being honest, they do understand all of the the limitations of the studies that they're they're quoting and following, right? You know, because again, this like standardizing a study uh, when it comes to bodybuilding is super difficult. Because if you tell your participants train to failure, what does that mean for each person? How do you how do you standardize that? You know, um, and when you really start to look at all the variables that are potentially at play in these studies, it's like you I think the best thing that you can get out of them is kind of guidelines. So like when you're think trying to use the science stuff, I think um do you know uh Scott Stevenson? Of course. Yeah. So I like I think he does a great job of balancing out like obviously he is a doctor, right? He's a very scientific guy, but he's also like he's a bro, you know, he's like, he's a bodybuilder. He's been doing this for years himself. And he, he defers to the, the bro science, you know, when it, it's obvious that this is a better way to do it. Uh, and he's like, well, you know, based on this study, we know this might be the case here, but like, you know, it, <laughs> what these guys are doing just kind of tends to work better. So maybe there's something we don't understand over here yet. You know, yeah. uh, when you, when you think of it, I, I think, 
I think they they deliver the science stuff with just too much arrogance. Like they're too confident in what they're saying. Um, and they're not acknowledging all the limitations uh, and all of the, the variables that they couldn't control uh, when they were doing these studies. Um, so they can be, you know, useful to, you know, maybe recognize a pattern somewhere um, or confirm a pattern that's already been observed by, by meatheads like us, right? But um, it's, to, to have it guide your entire programming is just not it's not that not really the best way to do it yeah um, if, if you can if you can understand mechanisms of what's going on um you know that's great you know understanding biological mechanisms uh you know how things how how things happen in a cell that's that's useful right understanding what a certain drug does at a certain receptor that's that's very handy stuff that you can kind of piece together and put it into a program um but having it be the basis of all of your, uh, all of your everything that you're doing is it's it's not going to work. Uh, yeah, and you nailed it perfectly. You says arrogance, and I real I'm realized that I'm doing the same shit. Sometimes I'm just too arrogant when it comes to the science, just because you are so overwhelmed by those guys, but because yeah. everyone's trying to to tell you that you're doing the wrong shit. Even even though I I put a lot of of mass, maybe not as much as you, but but I'm basically every year putting on a size, mm -hmm. and by, by doing stuff that 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 I can contradict the science basically. Yeah. So this think, is why I think this I, is why I I, I am arrogant just because it's just getting me crazy that those people says me no, that that does, that doesn't work and I see it. On me, on my clients. Yeah, it, it what makes it really frustrating is like their 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 attitudes, their delivery of the information is really bad. You know, if they were just saying like, "Hey, this is one way you could approach your bodybuilding and your training," you know, maybe try this. That would be great. But like they present it as this is the optimal best way to do it. All of the guys who are three hundred pounds and super yoked. They're doing it wrong because the study said so. And they're just, they're like their tone of voice, their attitude is so condescending. It's like, listen, guys, all, everybody who does what you tell them to kind of sucks. And everybody who's eating like four or 500 grams of protein and, you know, squatting till they can't stand and, you know, just like going as hard as they can, not everybody, right? But like a lot of people who do that are also the best in the world. So, I mean, they're they're not really marketing themselves very well in terms of results. It's like if if they all showed up gigantic and shredded at their shows, like okay, you know, results speak. But like none of none of them show up in shape at shows. Yeah. None of them put on muscle consistently. It's like <laughs> there's if if that's the end result, you know, if if you're how you look on stage is the goal, then this is not what you want to be doing. It's just proof from the pudding. These guys look like shit. I'm, I'm sorry, they do. Yeah, they do, <laughs> they do. At least most of the times, maybe there's a few, but I don't I don't recall anyone. I mean, I think, I can't really, I'm, and I'm trying to think of examples, honestly. I really am. I think the best competitor that is part of, you know, the science bro group is probably Jared Feather. If you know who that is, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So he's he was a he's a classic physique pro, um, who I think he said he was moving up to open bodybuilding. Um, the guy, like, he's a really nice dude. Uh, again, very smart. Tends to overthink things, from what I can tell. He's he's one. He's like very good friends with Mike Ezriatel. They train together a lot. Okay. Um, but you know, he, he was he was placing very poorly at the shows that he was doing the pro shows. Um, because he wasn't in shape. It was, it was as simple as that. You know, they, they diet using macro tracking. They use, you know, a bunch of reps and reserve training. Um, it's, it, they're eating like protein bars and stuff going into the last week of a show when, you know, everyone else is eating like fish and white rice, you know? So, and then they, they, they are not in shape and they place poorly. And there's a million explanations this guy gives for like, you know, scientific theories about why his body didn't 
optimally peak. Like, man, just just eat some fish and asparagus and just then then get back to me. Just like just try that, you know, before before you try to overthink anything. And I I I don't like being mean or like I don't mean to talk down to that guy because he he is really very friendly, right? He's a, he's a nice guy, but you, you see what they're doing and you see the result, and you're you're banging your head against the wall because you know that, or you know I don't know, but I I'm pretty confident, you know, just doing things simpler might work better. Um, but yeah, you know, I I again I can't really think of examples besides him. I, I I realized that the that the science took a full full circle, just because you <laughs> like a, back in the days you have those those ladies who are just not believing in any diet unless it's totally crazy like a banana diet or something like that. Yeah, and or like you keto have or to, carnivore. Yeah, you yeah. have to drink some some sort of tea or something just because you have to have the explanation why you are not losing weight. Oh, I am not losing weight just because I am not drinking this or that tea. That's the reason. And right now, the science guy doing the same. It's not lack of, of effort. I am just make a X, Y, Z, and that's the reason why. That's yeah. the reason and why. it's yeah. always some different X, Y, Z, too. <laughs> it's like... It's like these guys aren't going to church on the weekend or something. They need they need a new religion to worship. So it's <laughs> so it's science, or maybe it's juice cleanses, or you know, it's, it's people like to be part of a group uh, yeah. and you know be like they're part of a a movement. And I I get it, you know. I I'm I guess I'm part of the high intensity, low volume, uh, white fish at the end of a prep group. Um, but so are a lot of really good bodybuilders. So, I mean, I'd rather be in that group personally. <laughs> yeah, we 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 touch a subject of a, of a diet, and I wanted to ask you, what do you think about about it generally? But but because you you have some some guys like Sam Sulek, for example, and he he even said himself, I think, on one of the podcasts that he basically don't want to show the people how he is. Just because he he don't want to be copied by by other people, just because he knows that probably not everyone could eat like him and look even yeah. like how decent. Because he's he's a he's a smart guy. He's a he's a really smart guy. And, yeah. But I, I know that like probably seventy five percent of what he is doing is just marketing, and he's doing it great. I, but he's, what he's what do you think? Down, dude. He's I, I don't. Sam Sam's interesting. I'm not sure what what exactly he's up to because like w w he's clearly very smart, right? He's an engineer, but he's also like you know when he's in the gym and talking to his camera and stuff, like he doesn't present himself as like a smart guy. He's not using big words or anything, but he is he is very smart. I don't know like the way that he looks and the way that he supposedly eats according to the videos that he's released. I'm sorry, but that just does not line up unless we're looking at like one of the freakiest genetic bodybuilders. You don't believe ever... it? You don't believe it? I don't know, man. I I feel like he probably he probably eats a lot of chicken and rice too. Yeah, I, I think so. I don't I think know. So. I don't know, man, because like he looks good. And he got, you know, his his spring bulk, you know, he barely put on any fat and he's just he's just a bit he's just big. You know, either he's super gifted uh, or he's taking an absolute shitload of drugs. I don't think that's it. He's too smart for that. Or, you know, he's he's actually following a pretty good bodybuilding diet most of the time. I, I, I don't know. Um, may, maybe he's just trolling all of us. <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty uh, funny. <laughs> I, I think that this is like a mix of it. I think he is kind of eats like that, but probably like a 75% of his diet is mostly chicken and rice or something lean like that yeah Just maybe because you're probably not to be even able to to get a sufficient amount of protein from your milk or something like that because yeah. you have like a limit on your carbs and fats otherwise he 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 he'll be eating like a, i don't know like a 1.5 thousand grams of carbs a day just from a dairy <laughs> yeah yeah which you know, I don't know. If you've seen his videos; like he is burping a lot when he's training and stuff. But like, 
if, if you drank like a gallon of milk, a gallon mm-hmm. of chocolate milk, like how would that make you feel, bro? I, I couldn't walk. Like yeah. I couldn't move. Um, so yeah, I, I think he's, he's probably, he might be doing things a bit more strict than he's letting on, but I mean, what's his brand? You know, his brand is, you know, simple, stupid, train hard, um, you know, eat a lot of food. It's like, it's, it's like, this is what we all kind of wanted to be like when we first started in the gym. It's like, I'm going to train my ass off and then I'm going to go eat a bunch of shit. And I was like that. Too. Yeah. We were all like that, dude. It's like watching his videos kind of takes me back to like when I was 18, 19. Just, I didn't know shit. And this is know? why I, this is why I believe he is like that just because he's, I don't know, he's 21, 20 years old, something like that. He's 21 he's, or 22. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's very young, and I remember when I when I was started, and I I I am not like even half his size just because I was natural for uh, back then. But uh, uh-huh. I I make a pretty decent gains and pretty good like a cutting face, eating basically sheets. I was just counting yeah. macros. I remember when I started my diet it was basically chocolates and dairy. That was all, <laughs> just because I I wasn't afford for for more. Like a chocolate yeah. was my was my source of of uh, calories, like a bars, chocolate bars and stuff like that, because that was cheap, <laughs> and like a cottage cheese and stuff like that was my source of protein. That that's all. That's all I have yeah. money for. So I, I, I never had like a full on just like eat bullshit kind of phase in my bodybuilding. I had in my first real off season back in like uh, 2018, I, I was kind of 50 50. So I would have these these weight gainer shakes that I would make. And it was like it was like a quarter gallon of chocolate milk, 150 grams of oats and then like protein powder and peanut butter. It was probably like 2000 calories in like a blender that I would just blend up in the morning and I just chug that and I do like three meals in the middle of the day, chicken and rice or beef and rice or whatever. And then I do another one of those shakes at the end of the day. <laughs> so it was, I was having like half a gallon of chocolate milk a day, not too far off, honestly, yeah. but yeah. Um, a little more structured, but like it was, it was a lot of crap. I got fat. Like that's the only time I've ever gotten like fat in an off season. Um, it's pretty hard for me to get that soft, especially nowadays with like as much food as I need to eat. Um, But yeah, that was, (laughs) that was about as messy as I ever got uh, as far as like a a plan that I had. Yeah. My, my first, like a bulking uh, season, let's say to, to, to to say like that uh, Uh was like almost three years. Three years. (laughs) Yeah. And I put like a 45 pounds of, almost like a whole fat when i was started i weighed in like a 58 kilos 58 58 yeah oh my gosh (laughs) and i finished after three years on my first competition natural on a 67 kilos wow so (laughs) So something in there worked yeah yeah yeah. this is why i (laughs) this is why i believe some because yeah, I, I think I should... that's PDs and way, way better work ethic than I have. Just because uh-huh. I was I was a skipper. So every week I have different training plan. Just because oh, oh this, okay. this is gonna be better. Oh, this is gonna be better. Oh, this is gonna be better. And every week I'm switching from from totally different approaches. So so uh-huh. this is probably why I I I wasn't the best uh, at the beginning. With my with my training, and he is he is very structured when it comes to to training, and he he training hard. He's he's young, so the body just allows him to to do a crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you can kind of get away with stuff at that age that you yeah. can when you're older. Um, I mean, I don't like for me like my metabolism was just insane back then. It slowed down a little bit. It's still pretty quick, but like you know, I, I could just get away with stuff, especially if you have like, you know, a certain amount of gear in the mix. Like I, I just, I can kind of eat whatever. 
and GH and, and like a, yeah, uh, I mean, you start putting it all together, and stuff like that, and you can, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I doubt myself. All that, but I mean, he's obviously not natural, but I doubt he's like really, you know, thought out using a whole ton of drugs. Like, no, a, a I, I don't or. think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I I, I don't even wanted to 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 speak about the sum, <laughs> to be honest. But I just I just want to mention him just because right now I know that you are not believing in if if the whole I if, if, uh, I am like a, if it feed draw macros or yeah something like that just because you you're believing basically in structured bodybuilding diet yes yeah yeah that's I mean if I'm coaching somebody that's what I'm gonna have them doing. Um, you know, you're going to eat, be eating five or six meals a day, the same thing every day, uh, super regimented. Right. But like, if you're just like a kind of casual lifter who wants a little more freedom and stuff, and you're not going to be getting on stage, I, I don't really see anything wrong with it. If you're in like an off a focused off season, trying to put on muscle to, to get on stage bigger and better next year, I wouldn't do that. But if you're just like a guy who goes to the gym and works out, um, I, it's, it's fine. You know, it's not going to be optimal. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to control all these variables and shit, but like, I mean, it's, it's, it's better than nothing. It's better than not tracking your food. Um, but yeah, if you're serious, like you follow a meal plan, everyone does it. Yeah. I wanted to ask you that the blue gives you, uh, the meal plan or just, yeah, like a macro and the options for the for for the sauces to switch. For example, you can eat like a lean no, meat he, or chicken. Or he gives me a meal plan, and he specifically chooses you know like specific protein sources when I'm in prep versus the off season. I mean, like blue is blue is very old school. He's like you know if you're if you're six weeks out from a show, you're switching to all white fish until the show. And at the end, like, you know, he'll still have, like, whey isolate in there in, like, my first meal or whatever. But the last week before the show, he cuts out all the whey. He cuts out all the artificial sweeteners, flavors, everything, right, that could potentially not be natural, potentially make you hold water. I'm not sure if I believe all of that, but, like, I'll be having, like, 300 grams of fish for my my protein for my breakfast. And I got, like, a bowl of oats over here. It's it's gross because I'm usually like mixing together my protein and my oatmeal, and it's like it's taste. It's my favorite meal of the day. <laughs> he takes that away from me at the end, but like, yeah, he's he's very he's very OCD about all those little details. Um, because you know your first show might not really mean much, right? But like, if you're competing at a professional level or a national level, all those little things might add up. Uh, I think I think there it is a good way to to run things. Um, all those little details matter, I think. Especially last week, just because yeah. what is what is seven days compared to whole twenty sixty weeks? You just suffer. So yeah. if you're gonna ruin it by adding, I don't know, like a golden farm syrup or something like that, yeah. come on, man, this is just yeah, seven days. Up. I mean, yeah. that's the easiest part too. Like, if you're if you're doing a show right, like you should be you should be completely fat free at seven or eight days out, and you're just relaxing. You know, you're like getting the pump in the gym. You're done doing cardio. You're chilling out, uh, and then you look good on stage. You know, it's like you can't follow a little bit of a stricter diet. I but you know the IAFYM guys are <laughs> they're eating protein bars two days before they get on stage. I'm like. You don't think that's gonna clog up your digestion or anything? Like, okay, man. <laughs> Especially if, if they are still switching the sources. So, for example, yeah, they, yeah just because they are not following uh, any structure uh, for most of, of the time. So they are basically eating different stuff for uh, every meal, and if something goes wrong, you, you cannot even pinpoint what's causing it. Yeah, too many variables. It's yeah. it's impossible. Uh -huh. Yeah, one one more thing about the diet. Uh, mm -hmm. How many grams <laughs> per kilogram of the body weight you think uh, is sufficient for a bodybuilder when it comes to protein? Just because uh, I, I just asked this the same question, uh, John Jewett, and he yeah. he has like a very non bodybuilding approach to this. <laughs> well, what's his approach? 
he he basically says like a one one pound per uh, one gram per per pound is enough or something. Uh -huh. like that. I don't want to screw it, but that but that was very low. He eats like I don't know twenty two hundred fifty maybe grams of protein a day, something like that. So it's so it's okay. very 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 low. Yeah, I mean for body, you know, I, I I'll tell you what I blue. Blue, my coach at Blue is very, he likes high protein. So I've always, you know, when I've been working with him, I've had a, a high protein diet. Um, I generally put my clients on one and a half to two grams per pound of body weight, depending. Um, you know, I the, the thing that's going to depend there is like, if their digestion can't handle that much meat, because uh, it's like, it's not coming from, you know, protein shakes and stuff. It's like, you know, you're eating like nine, 10, 11 ounces of meat every meal, which is a lot. It's, it's, it's tough. Um, if they can't handle that, their stomachs can't handle it, then we'll dial things back and we'll put food in in other places. But um, yeah, I mean, personally, I've gone up to, I think, 12, 12 and a half ounces, you know, four or five times a day, um, which isn't even like totally insane like some guys have done. But I'll tell you, like, you look at like, all the really good coaches out there, you know, my coach blue, Chad Nichols, uh, honey Rambod. Those guys are like insanely high protein diet guys. Um, you know, Chad's like two to three grams per pound of body weight, which is like, you know, between like four and a half and six pounds or grams per kilo. Yeah. So it's super high. Right. And I think, I think the, the, the reason why they do it is it works uh, for really big, like very enhanced guys, guys who are on a lot of steroids, a lot of growth hormone, a lot of insulin. Um, so like this isn't necessarily as applicable to like, you know, you know, enhanced guys or like natural guys, uh, although it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but like you got to think of the way I think about it is like you're treating protein every time you eat like a bunch of protein, you're treating it as like a signal, like a signaling molecule because you know every time you ingest like a certain amount of leucine right it switches on that mTOR switch which tells your body to start you know replicating proteins and start building itself um so if you're constant if you hit it like six times a day with a whole bunch of protein and it's like constantly in an anabolic state you know instead of having like these dips of like anabolic catabolic anabolic catabolic you know where you're going up and down you're basically just like up high the whole day and even like you know you get up to eat in the middle of the night or something have a shake like you know the amount of time that your body is in an, in an anabolic state is just going to be higher overall um, and i think that's the reason why it works if i had to guess the thing is like you're never going to have anyone do a study on this because like the guys that it works really well on are like men's open pro bodybuilders you know, guys on a bunch of drugs, uh, and you can't control that variable in a study, but it, it tends to work. I, I mean, I can't really explain it entirely, but it tends to work. Yeah. So you know, I probably have like 500 grams of protein in my diet right now. Something I feel like the that. same. I feel exactly the same. And this is what I think is mostly lost in translation that people not taking into the consideration that professional bodybuilders are on performance enhancing drugs yeah. and they are helping with with like a intake of this protein so maybe for those who are really natural you don't need as much protein but for people who are 10 15 20 i use of gh three five yeah. grams of, of gear and stuff like that because they are guys like that they are uh -huh. needed it they are needed the protein just because, just because their metabolism is crazy, skyrocket, and yeah. everything is just turned over very, very quickly. So, so yeah. this is this is why I think it works. And like you said, you, you just simply cannot study this just because it's not ethical. Yeah, <laughs> I <I'd laughs> volunteer in a heartbeat. Don't get me wrong, but I, <laughs> I don't yeah, know but anybody. No one's gonna, no one's gonna pay for that. Uh, yeah, I wish, man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, this is like a this is like the the biggest problem. 
nobody's gonna uh, make a money out of it so no gonna nobody's gonna pay for that studies oh well we can yeah. dream <laughs> yeah of course thank you Stuart I'm not gonna take uh, um, uh, much uh, more of your time just because you're probably starting to get hungry uh, or something like that <laughs> or just just wanted to go to sleep just because it's it's like a, I don't know 9 p.m right but now, yeah it's like nine o'clock now it's yeah. not too late Okay, it's 6 a.m. here, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're in Poland, yeah? Yeah, I'm in Poland, yes. Okay. Yeah, but, but I'm so happy that you that you find the time this week just because the next week is crazy for me, so I would probably... You got guys competing, right? Yeah, yeah, my guys compete uh, tomorrow, actually. Okay. Yeah, they right now they are sending me a uh, morning chickens. <laughs> All right, go go get back so, to them. <laughs> thank you, man, and and I'm following your 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 log on on PM. So maybe I'm gonna just put it into the description box below if yeah. someone's are interesting in in following uh, Stuart in other places than just Instagram. First, a big announcement, just because I'm probably gonna be first. You. I've heard starting to uh, make your own like a YouTube channel or something like that. Yeah, I'm uh I'm working on that right now. I, I got to get comfortable like talking in front of a camera. Uh, I'm I'm totally normal with it like on my own, but if I'm in a gym, I feel so weird just like talking uh, in public like a crazy person. Um, just just so get, the, get the voiceovers. Too. This is the best. I, I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna start with yeah. that, and then like ease my way into like, uh, you know, doing like actual talking when I'm training. But um, yeah, I'm 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 gonna be I'm gonna be starting that up. I'm probably I hate to say this, but I'm probably gonna make a TikTok account pretty soon too. Because it's this, uh, this is it's, not a shame. This is not a shame. Uh, just the twenty. I'm kind of ashamed of it. It's just it's <laughs> it's very popular platform. You know, there's a lot of people on it, so. The first rule I, of the TikTok is never, never read the comments. <laughs> this is, okay. yeah, this is, <laughs> you're going to mention my words. Me. You're going to mention did. my words. If you think that th there are stupid people on the YouTube comments uh -huh. or Instagram comments, you're not even imagining <laughs> <laughs> what is going on out there on TikTok. There are they're all like are, 15 yeah. years old yeah <laughs> yeah even those guys who are 30 plus uh, tends to act like they are 12 yeah just because well, on tiktok everything is allowed everything is allowed oh boy <laughs> it's crazy man crazy well yeah i'll probably be starting that um i have a couple of i actually i'm probably gonna be doing some video editing in the next couple of days here um but yeah, I'm, I'm, I am going to start doing that on my own. I don't have like a video editor or anything to do it for me. I'm just going to teach myself how to do it because I've got the time now. I quit my job like a couple of weeks ago. So congrats. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm all in on coaching. And um, I do have a supplement contract lined up. And I'm not going to say who who with yet, but that's going to be public knowledge soon, I think. So well, great for you. Great for you. And if anyone wants to just just uh, be coached by by Stuart, I'm gonna also put uh, the, the your email and every yes. informations down below. So if anyone just wanted to 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 grow <laughs> and do it right, just hit this guy uh, down below, and, and he probably gonna figure it out your 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 problem why you are not growing, man probably just eating the protein bars and stuff like more that. more protein yeah more protein yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you Stuart. and thank you, man. if anyone just here with us still remember to subscribe to to follow and if you can just share this just because it's very hard to to reach out the people outside of Poland if you are living in Poland and especially if the the video is in English just because the the mechanism of uh, algorithm in on YouTube it's crazy so you basically I would have to upload it from the uh, US IP just to hit more views oh really yeah it's oh, crazy okay. yeah 
<laughs> so thank you once again and see you next time. Thank you, man. Thank you.